Now, live, this is CBS 4 News at 11. We sent undercover cameras into dozens of police stations. We wanted to find out how people would be treated and what the procedures are for filing complaints against police officers. I-Team investigator Mike Kirsch is here now with his investigation into what some might consider police station intimidation. Police departments around the country, like here in Tallahassee, give citizens police complaint forms all the time, no questions asked. But walk into a police station in South Florida trying to find out how to file a complaint and watch what happens. Yeah, I wanted to find out how to file a complaint against an officer. But I just wanted to find out how to do it. I mean, you guys have a form or something that I could take with well, me? Well, you got to tell me first, and then I got to hear what's going on. You got to tell me what the complaint is. Do you have a complaint form that I can, like, fill out or something like that? Might not be a, a legitimate complaint. Who decides that? I'm trying to help you. Like, if there's a form, why can't I just take it and leave, right? No, you don't leave with forms. You tell me what happened, and then I help you from there. Do you have, you have an idea on you? Why? You know what? You need to leave, okay? You're refusing to tell me what you want to do, okay? You're refusing to tell me who's involved, where it happened, what transpired. You're not cooperating with me one bit. I was just asking if you guys have like a complaint form or like if there's some way for me to contact internal affairs. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's a free country. Why are you I cursing know. at me? Where do you live? Where do you live? Office Ethics. Alright, first of all. So you're not gonna tell me where you live, what your name is, or anything like that, right? I mean if you're gonna like I mean if I have to. Are you on medication? Why would you ask me something like that? Because you're not answering any of my questions. So I'm on medication? I asked you. It's a free country. I can ask you that. Okay, you're right. So you're not going to tell me who you are. You're not going to tell me what the problem is. You're not going to identify yourself. All I asked you was, like, how do I contact you? You said you had there. a complaint. You said my officers are acting in an inappropriate manner. Leave now. Leave now. Now, you better keep walking, son, before you get yourself in some trouble. I'm not doing anything wrong. Neither am I. It's a free country. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Why don't you get out of my face, man? I'm not in your face. I'm standing. Sidewalk, free country. In the driveway, more step towards me, see what happens. I didn't drive away. Poison, man. Take one more step towards me, see what happens. There's about three to four blocks south of the driveway. Yeah, I'm trying to find out how to file a complaint against an officer. Where does he work at? I'm saying he works at this district. I'm, we're trying to file I'm asking complaint. you a question. Where does he work at? He works here at this district. The answer was just try to answer my question. I'm, I'm, you, I think you think this is a big conspiracy. I'm trying to like find out like how you file a complaint. That's what I'm asking. If you think you can walk in here and go straight to the director of Metro Day Police without telling me any details, you can't do it. And I, for some reason, you think that. I don't know why. You think it's a big conspiracy that I'm gonna, we're gonna hide some information about what happened to you? I don't know. Is it a traffic ticket? Is it something that, you know, a discourtesy complaint? What is it? He stole your lunch money? Uh, did he steal your money? Did he, you know, have sex with your wife? What? Uh, I just wanna know how can I go about uh, filing a complaint on the police officer? Okay, where did the incident happen? What street? And what, uh, what, sir, I, uh, Why don't you shut up? I said this is very suspicious that you can pull in here at this time of night. He comes Eight o'clock. You're, you're constantly butting in. I'm constantly butting in? Sir, I would like to leave. I would love it, but he's got your driver's license, so you're just going to have to sit. So are you detaining us? Okay, could I give you a ticket right now for improper backing? You can do whatever you, you want to do, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that means yes, I guess you're saying, right? And for backing up, correct? Yes? 
I was backing up, sir, because I was leaving. Like, there's no way, like, to just write it down on something, like... Well, first of all, why don't you tell me what happened, and I'll tell you if somebody did something wrong to you. I mean, like, I feel like I know, like, I mean, if somebody did something wrong, I mean, like, I mean, I, you know... Well, maybe not. Sometimes people don't. Some people think that we're not allowed to do certain things, and we are, and sometimes, you know, some guys take it overboard, and they're not allowed to do that. Right. You know, I don't know what happened. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to, like, I don't, I don't want to talk. I tried to help you, but I mean, I don't have issues, man. The real issue seems to be why can't a complaint form against the police be found seemingly anywhere at South Florida Police Department? Is there, like, just a form that I can just fill out? Is there a form or something? Is there just something I can fill out because I don't have, like, a complaint form or anything? This like hidden camera test was carried out by a police abuse watchdog group called the Police Complaint Center. Yeah, Remarkably, of 38 different police stations tested around South Florida, all but three had no police complaint forms. Is there a form or something? Is there just something I can fill out? You guys don't have like a complaint form or anything like that? Florida City PD and Homestead PD had them, as did the city of Miami, in three languages, English, Spanish, and Creole. But Miami Police Chief John Timoney was in no mood to gloat after hearing about the social skills of some cops. Why don't you shut up? And the behavior of other police officers when asked how complaints might be filed against their fellow cops. Do you want to visit my jail cell instead? Less than one minute into his stop at the Pine Lawn Police Department and tester Greg Slade is threatened with jail time. Sergeant Christopher Clay acknowledged his department has complaint forms, but he refused to give one up. So you're not going to give me a complaint form? Slate continued pressing Sergeant Clay. You're not allowed to give me that complaint form, or you just won't? I might be speaking a foreign language to you. You have to contact the chief. He's the only one that hands out the form. And that's your policy? That's, that's, your, policy. that's your official policy? That's our official policy. All right. I left the police department when he told me that their official policy was not to give out complaint forms after hours. And that was the only thing that I wanted him to tell me. He thought it was over until Sergeant Clay met him outside and said, get out of my city. Yeah, get out of your city. And what happens if I, what happens if I don't? And what happens if I don't? You put me under arrest? Yep, you're under arrest. Come on. I'm under arrest for what? Man, what are you doing to me, man? What are you doing, man? I'm just, stop pushing me, man. You're squeezing my... Hey, open the door. JJ don't get it. Oh. What am I under arrest for, man? I'm telling you to comply. Comply with what? You're in a government building, man. Do you understand what that means? You don't got to dump me property. Do you understand what that means? Sidewalk? We went in after them and immediately talked to Sergeant Clay. I asked him what specifically what the incident was about. I can't help you if I don't know what the incident was about. Is there anything wrong with asking for a complaint form? We, we, what, how we do it is so we keep track of them. They're like a control number. So we know exactly what complaints were coming in. He wasn't getting it. And we have, you know, we try to do things. And I explained to him, this is what you need to do. I explained to him three times. But can you arrest somebody for not getting it? But he ain't under arrest. I didn't want him to calm down and get on the standing. But Slate was under arrest with an official court date and summons. Here you go. We're done. Were you throwing me out? This is police surveillance video of a test in Independence, Missouri last year. The officers refused to give him a complaint form and then arrested him. What are you doing, man? Oh, f Slate ended up in the hospital. In Dallas, another police complaint center tester encountered this deputy who appeared to reach for a weapon. Oh, officer, I don't need me no problem. Okay. They call you in for me? I don't know. Oh, you're here to make a complaint? Yeah, yeah, well, no, I want to find out how to, to do it first. Can I get your name? Rich. So let me see your license. Well, what, if I, what, if, what if I don't have it on me? That's, you know. Failing to identify yourself, I can take you and put you in jail. All right? Is that what you want? No, I don't want to go there. Okay, give me your license then. And some, like San Bernardino Sheriff's Department Corporal Ray Austin, had an intimidating message. Is it the way it works? They'll, they'll interview you with a tape, and then they'll talk to the officer to do an investigation. And if your allegation is unfounded, the officer has the right to sue you. But that's not the policy of the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department. It states that any citizen can take a complaint form home, and they can fill it out anonymously. Jones left feeling as if he was being threatened into not filing a report, and even the captain agreed. I can see how somebody who was listening to the, the corporal would feel intimidated. 
After seeing the results of our test here at Sheriff's Headquarters in San Bernardino, we wanted to find out if the same attitude existed at other Sheriff's facilities. So the very next day, we sent our tester to Victorville. What's the complaint process? Again, Jones was told he wouldn't get a complaint form without giving his name and other information. This time, Sergeant Pat Daly made it seem like our tester was the criminal. We have to take names to know how this is going. We just don't give people no names. And I, I would feel that you got something to hide then if you're, if you're this suspicious or this secret. And when Jones remains reluctant, the sergeant draws his own conclusion. We're arrested before, right? And why would your sergeant draw that conclusion that he's been arrested before? Or try I, to even elicit a response from that? I, I, I can't answer for the sergeant. I don't know. I see that you're recording. Yes. You're not allowed to record or use cell phones in here. In a lobby, you can record us all day. The nine records is that policy? Yes. Yeah. Can you show that? Camera? I don't have the policy. I would like to. Move. Okay, but you need to turn the camera off. I'll turn it off. I asked you to do it. Dude, I asked you to do it. What is your problem? What is your problem? What is your, what is your problem? Ah. Ah. Well, it really sounds like you're being a little bitch about it. Why don't you just take it like a man? Belendi Delanoy says a station house cop called him a little bitch when he tried to complain about alleged racial bias by a patrol officer. The I-team used a hidden camera to test how Nassau County cops treat people who have a complaint about alleged police abuse. But first, Belendi's story. It prompted the undercover investigation you're about to see. He placed his hand on his gun. He screamed at me. He was like, you know, you don't belong here. Belendi said a cop confronted him when he was in the mostly white community of East Meadow, Long Island. He screamed at me. Why are you even parked in front of these people's houses? It was late at night in early September. Belendi picked up some food at an all-night diner and went to hang out with a friend from college. He was getting out of his parked car when the cop pulled up behind him. After the cop checked Belendi's license and registration, Belendi says the cop made this demand. He hands it to me and tells me to get the hell out of here. Belendi then asked the cop for his name and badge number. Belendi says the cop retaliated by writing him tickets. When he hands me tickets, he said, here. There's my name and badge number. Two of the three tickets were for moving violations, even though Belendi was parked. Get this. He never saw me driving. Later that day, Belendi went up to a cop on the desk at the first precinct to file a complaint. I told him the situation what happened. Belendi says that cop then became abusive. He says to me, well, it really sounds like you're being a little bitch about it. You're making a bigger deal out of something that is not. We wanted to find out if Nassau County cops are discouraging complaints about alleged police abuse. We went undercover to investigate using Maurice Hayes as a tester. Maurice was the man who helped us investigate whether or not it was a crime to drive while black in Nassau County. This is Maurice in our hidden camera video. He ended up handcuffed for over an hour, even though he'd committed no crime, not even a traffic violation. We decided to test what would happen if Maurice wanted to complain about his treatment that night. We sent him to a different part of Nassau County wearing a hidden camera. He went to four precincts and asked this simple question. How do I go about filing a complaint against the officer? Three precincts flunked our test. They gave the wrong information. Here in the third precinct in Williston Park, a sergeant insists there was only one way to do it. I have to know what happened. I mean, you just can't come in here and say, I, I have a complaint. You're just going to fill it out. There's no such thing. you got to tell me what happened. I don't know what the hell happened. But that's not the only way, and the sergeant should have known better. If you feel reluctant to talk at a station house, you don't have to. According to the Nassau County Police Department's own policy, you can file a complaint by phone or by mail, or go directly to internal affairs. I want to know 
your options. How do I file a complaint? Maurice keeps at it. He asks 12 times at the third precinct. I can't call over the phone. Finally, the sergeant tells him he can call internal affairs, but then discourages him from doing that. Nobody's in, in, in internal affairs right now. Six four. LA. So you give it to me, and if it's worthy of an internal affairs investigation, so play. It's, a, it's a complicated process. Then this inappropriate question. What do you have, warrants or something? No, I don't have no warrants. So why are you so nervous about talking? I'm in a police station. You've been, you've been here before, I guess? No. Why does that sergeant suggest that Maurice is a criminal? Remember, he's done nothing except ask how to file a complaint about police abuse. Things went from bad to worse at the 5th Precinct in Elmont. Maurice asks the same how-to question. How do I go about filing a complaint against an officer? Listen to the cop's answer. This is not New York City. The prison. New York City will take a complaint for anything. We don't take a complaint for anything. Yeah, of then more hostility. We don't have a form just to bitch on because you want to make a complaint. Look, file a complaint, you can't even go with it. This woman right here is trying to file a complaint with the 46th precinct. You're here to make a complaint? Is that is that the concept here? Yeah, um, so let me ask you this. If I was to fill something out as far as what, when, where, and how, mm -hmm. and bring it in, mm -hmm. are you the person that's going to oversee that? Most likely, because I'm here, I'm the one. If it happened, when did it happen today? Yeah. So, officer, let me ask you this, sergeant. If I fill out a complaint in that regards, mm -hmm. and you oversee it, I mean, you already have something against me already. No, I don't have anything against you. I mean, but for you to say that if I don't talk to you, you're just going to arrest me or find something to arrest me on, that's something against me. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you want to talk to me? I don't get it. I, I, honestly, I don't want to get into it like that. I, I just came in to get some documentation, something of that nature, so if it's a complaint, something of that nature, I can fill out a complaint and have it heard and go on from there. But, I mean, if, you, if you're telling me that you know, you, you find something to rest me on. I mean, you know, that's the problem right there. If you wish he, he assaulted my husband. If you wish to make a written statement, if you wish to make a written statement, uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, I, I will just also tell you that there is a penalty in the state of Ohio for making a false complaint. And that if the complaint is investigated and determined to be false, I will personally recommend that that case itself be reviewed by the prosecutor. And if those charges are false, there will be a prosecution. That's fine. I just want to let you know that up front. When did this, up, this incident occur? occur. Um, I don't want to get into it, you know. I'm just trying to find out. OK, sir, let me see your driver's license. 124, I need you to 1019 PD, please, the lobby. ID is subject here is the lobby. Using the ID. I'm just yeah, trying to. ID? Yeah, I got ID. Can I see it? Do I have to give it? Well, you're going to have to tell us who you are if you're making a report. No, nah, that's all right, then. Well, I need to see your ID. So I'd like to, I've sent it to you as an email, and I would like to read it to you. So let me do that. Go It'll ahead, take sir. a few moments. Go Thank ahead. you very Thank much. You. I appreciate it. On June 29th, 2011, at 3.44 p.m., I noticed a silver van with nobody in it illegally parked at a hydrant across from my, the street from my building on the northwest corner of 102nd Street and Riverside Drive. So to be cautious, I photographed the plates. The New York plates are number DMC 9287. Then I noticed that there was a police parking plate in the window, which was issued from the 81st Precinct, which is in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. As I was taking the pictures, a guy in a Yankees cap approached me and asked, do you got a problem? I said, the van is parked illegally. He said, you people always notice a pattern. I did not understand what he meant, and I said, excuse me? You people always notice a fucking pattern, he said. I said, what do you mean? He said, there was another guy parked up there, and someone complained about that. I did not understand what he was talking about. I, I asked, do you know what the van is doing here? And he replied, well, talk to the cop over there. I looked in the direction he was pointing and asked, who's the cop? To my surprise, he said, your fucking mother. What? I said, what? And he repeated more aggressively, your fucking mother. I realized this was the cop from the van, and that, or that this was the uh, occupant of the van, and that he was being host hostile and provocative. I asked, who are you, stepped back to about 10 feet from him, and raised my phone to take a picture. The guy lunged at me and grabbed me by the neck, throwing me against the building with great force. You take a fucking picture of me, and I'll fucking crush your face, he said. A woman and some kids were walking by, and I yelled, call the police. The guy yelled to them mockingly, yeah, call the police. He then released my neck and pushed me away. As I stumbled away, he yelled, you take a fucking picture of me, and I'll fucking kill you. 
I spoke to a witness who lives in the neighborhood who told me I could find her if I needed. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, I appreciate you letting me uh, put that on the record. Anything else, sir? Um, that's all uh, that I have to say about that, but I'm very happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. He pushed you, am I correct? No, he grabbed me around the neck and pinned me against the wall by my neck, causing me to choke, and he threatened to kill me. Okay. Sir, do you go around taking pictures of vehicles parked illegally? Um, I, I'm Detective uh, Hinton, um, why are you asking me that question? Because when someone, when you take pictures of people's vehicle, you know. Yes, go on. Sometimes they react in that kind of manner. Yes, and is that against so the law? or is that yourself is in, that harm, in harm's way? If Detective, if I see a car in the street and I want to take a picture of it, I can do that. That is my right as a citizen of the United States. So why would you put yourself in harm's way? <laughs> okay, you obviously didn't understand or you weren't listening to what I was talking no, about. No, 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 no. sir. You Clear. said to sir. me that you fit for your safety. Didn't he you tell me he that? acted in no he acted in such a manner oh, to so make me. You didn't you didn't tell me that you're a difficult person to talk. Uh, to I'm really not. I'm, because I'm, you're I'm, making this too long, and I'm about to get off the phone with you. Well, listen, I'm, I already I, did my job. I took your complaint. Yes, but I have also a complaint about the 24th precinct, which I'd like right. to file. I'm gonna place you on hold, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, there's I one thing I need, I need to clarify. No, 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 with no, no you. sir, sir, sir. I'm getting off the phone. I already sir, there's security. something I need to clarify this is what's with you. What's gonna happen? Speak, sir. Speak, speak, because you won't get off the phone anyway. Listen, I'm, I'm asking you to do your job. You're with the, you, you kept me waiting for, for an hour. I'm speaking now, and I'm telling you a complaint. It's your job, and I pay your salary, and I'm telling you about a complaint Say that I what? have. Say what? I pay your salary. Who no, do you, you think don't, sir. You do not. Who pays your salary? Please. Don't, now, let's say not what get you it. have to say, sir. Say what you have to say. <laughs> I wrote in my complaint that what the guy did to me was menacing in the second degree, and I, and I wrote out the reasons why that was, and he put down harassment. And it was not harassment. By definition, by the law, 121.4, menacing in the second degree, he or she engages in a course of conduct, intentionally placing or attempting to place a person in reasonable fear of physical injury, serious physical injury or death. He said he was going to kill me if I did something that I have every right to do. And it's no difference I'm taking a picture he, if he doesn't want me taking a picture, he can turn around or he can walk away. There is no provision of law that says if someone takes a picture of you, you can grab them by the neck and threaten to kill them. Okay? That's the law. I shouldn't have to tell you that because I'm a civilian and you're a cop. But that is the law, and it's written right here in 120.14. You should have choked every hair out of your throat. Pardon me? I'm sorry? What did you just say? What's your complaint, sir? Who am I speaking with? Same person, sir. Did you just say something about choking my throat? I say you, you already mentioned that you know, the person choked your throat. What's your other complaint? Right. And my complaint is that they wrote it down as harassment. And I said it's not harassment. I'm not alleging harassment. I'm, not, I'm making a complaint about menacing and stalking. And I read them the law. And the guy told me something untrue. He said, if he threatens your life, that's harassment. Yeah, exactly. Just some talk, that's all. I'm okay. sorry? Go ahead, sir. Are you talking to me? I said go ahead. I told you that I alleged so, stalking. I alleged a misdemeanor of stalking and menacing in the second and third degree, and he wrote down harassment. But what the guy did to me is not harassment. It's menacing in the third and second degree, and it's stalking. I'd like to have murder. You'd like to add murder. <laughs> Do you know that this, this uh, conversation is recording? And you just said you'd like to add murder. It's your word against mine. No, it's not. It's the tape's word against yours. Okay, well, the tape against my word. You're making it difficult. I'm not making anything question, big, difficult. You, you know, you're making it I'm making a complaint that the guy put down the wrong charge. Okay, and I have that I have that here on, on writing, and I'll add that to your complaint. Okay, you didn't say that though. You said I should add, I'd like to add murder. So the list anything of, else you would like to add? One more thing I have to. You said to me, you asked me if I went around taking pictures of cars, and I want to know why you said that. Because if you fear for your safety, why would you put yourself in harm's way? 
when you take a picture of somebody else's property, sometimes they react that way. And so if you feel how does that, safety, how does that, why how, would you why would you take a picture of other people's property? Because now listen to me carefully. He was on my block in front of my house. He does not have the right to push me or tell me he's so going to kill my me. Understanding, my understanding is it has nothing when, to do when with I first got this complaint mm -hmm. that you were taking a picture of the vehicle because it was parked illegally. I mean, that's your right to do. People can still react in a violent manner. Yes, so but that's against the... So whether you say stalking <laughs> or his vehicle parked illegally, yeah, but people it's, tend it's to against... react in a negative manner. I know, manner. But, but you know what? If I go up to you, or if you call me a bad name, and I hit you with a pipe, I'm the one who gets arrested. And they don't say, well, he, I mean, I can't say, well, he called me a bad name, so I hit him with a pipe. That's just not the law. The law is I can take a picture of any darn thing I want to. No, we're not going by what the law states. Of course we, we are. The law is the law. Of course we're going by the law. And the fact that I took the, car, the picture of the car does not change anything at all. I can go around taking pictures of people in New York City with absolute impunity. And if somebody punches me, they go to jail. I don't. And if you disagree with that, then you simply don't know the law. The fact is, it's a totally inappropriate question for you to ask me, why am I taking a picture of a car? I could have taken the picture of the car because I thought it was a pretty car and I wanted to take a picture of it because it's the kind of car I want to get. And if the guy comes in and throws me against the wall and tells me he's going to kill me, he's the one who gets in trouble, not me. And that's why I'm saying that for you to tell me that I did something wrong or imply that I was uh, jeopardy, I was doing something inappropriate by taking a, a picture of the car, that's the point here. And I, I, I'd like to hear a... a a confirmation of that because otherwise I'm very very troubled by your attitude you're saying to me that somehow I shouldn't have taken a picture of the car and this cop had the right to bang my head against the wall and threaten to kill me because I took a picture of his car that's what I'm complaining about you understand Duncan Hicks was inside the Victorville Police Station this month to file a police report. Unsatisfied with how the receptionist and deputy were handling it, right. Hicks recorded part of the incident. He was very disrespectful to me, very rude to me. Hicks says this was his third time here and also called once, and says this time the deputy refused to write his report down and then took it a step further. This is not explaining the incident, sir. Okay, Duncan, you know what, man? I'm about getting tired of you, and you're about to go to jail, just so you know. What am I going to jail for? That, I'll create something, you understand? You'll go to jail, you understand that? Uh, I was shocked. I didn't do nothing wrong. You know, I, I'm a law-abiding citizen. You can't say that. How are you going to create something? That's against the law. Illegal? Recording me like that? That's illegal. Without my knowledge, you want to go to jail for that, too? According to the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, recording in the station is allowed. We then traveled to neighboring Huntington Park, and it seemed that word traveled with us. I want to know, I want to file a complaint against one of your officers. Uh -huh. What do I do? do I, is there a form or something? Cause Weren't you just at Bell Police Department? Yeah. Sergeant Michael Craven was apparently alerted by Bell Police, but instead of realizing it was a test, he proceeded to violate his own department's complaint policy. But I'm just ticked off about it. I don't feel like getting into that. Well, That's the reason. I mean, there's no reason. I can't give you a complaint. But it's just a form. I can't get into it. I know what it is, but I need to know what it's about. So if you're not happy with me, then you can come back tomorrow morning and talk to my chief of police. Jones didn't want to provide information and didn't have to according to police policy. But Sergeant Craven didn't know or didn't care. You have to let me know where it occurred. If you don't know where it occurred, how, how can we even investigate this thing? Because if you don't know where it happened at, you don't know what day it happened at, then there ain't nothing I can do for you. Should have kept my name. You're not happy with me. You take my name, it's right there, Sergeant Craven. You come back tomorrow morning and complain to my chief of police. We did just that. So if you're not happy with me, then you can come back tomorrow morning and talk to my chief of police. Assistant Chief Michael Visser viewed the tape. Oh. Huntington Park wasn't alone in policy violations. The Culver City Police Department watch commander also refused to give out a form without any information. We need to know who you are, where you live, phone number, that kind of stuff. Every time I give out a form, I have to register that with the chief's office as to who I gave it to and the nature of the complaint. 
That violates the Culver City Police policy. A police lieutenant told me anyone can come in and get a complaint form, and complaints can be filed anonymously, even if the forms are registered with the chief's office. It would certainly appear to be a stonewalling effect. If you don't know where it occurred, how, how can we even investigate this? Larry Paul is a 40-year law enforcement veteran. He reviewed the undercover videotapes and says the Culver City Watch Commander and others who refuse to give out forms may not be ignorant of policy, but trying to protect their own. It would appear to me that he was certainly attempting to discourage any complaints being registered through his department. The Huntington Park assistant chief refused to tell me if Sergeant Craven faced any disciplinary action because he violated department policy. Culver City Police were invited to respond to our report, but they refused. It's 2 a.m. on a Tuesday night. Our tester, Doug Jones, is walking into one of the most notorious police stations in the LAPD, the Rampart Division. His purpose, to ask about filing a complaint. I am, hey, look, if I want to file a complaint against one of your officers, what do I do? Your Honor, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to address this court. Rampart Division is, of course, where Rafael Perez admitted shooting innocent victims like Javier Ovando. And this is where we began our test of the LAPD complaint process. Yeah. In Victorville, our tester was refused a form, violating department policy. As soon as you can explain to me what's going on, I'd be more than happy to help you out. In San Bernardino, Sheriff's Corporal Ray Austin's conduct was found to be intimidating by his own captain. If your allegations are unfounded, the officer has the right to see you. At Lakewood. I did find something that you can actually mail in. And at Palmdale. Okay. You just seal it and you send it to here. Jones was able to take a complaint form home so he could fill it out anonymously. But at two other stations we tested, he was told there was no such form. We also tested the Long Beach Police Department. We were told that forms were only filled out by supervisors, and Jones had to put his name on any complaint. Oh, I can't, like, just send one in, like, anonymously or just, you know. That's be in person. You can't file a complaint anonymously. But the Long Beach Police Department policy clearly states you can file anonymous complaints. In all, we tested 31 police locations. 19 followed policy. They provided complaint forms or complied with proper procedures. 12 did not follow policy. They either had no forms or no supervisors on duty who could give us one, or they violated one or more procedures. I want to file a complaint against one of your deputies. What do I do? Jones, who works for the Police Complaint Center, a national police watchdog group, says the percentages are about average. They've done the tests in many major cities and say the findings usually work to improve police policies. We do tests, and that's what we're conducting is tests, not to catch them with their pants down. I mean, there are um, agencies that are done very well. Do you guys have like a complaint form? Is there, is there, you just come in here however you want, one kind of paper or pen? I mean, obviously anything, but you guys have a form? Well, it doesn't have to be on the form. Well, I mean, do you guys have a form? Some people write us letters, but do you guys have a form? I feel like we're beating around the bush right now. Oh, shit. Let's not. Let's stop beating around the bush. Do you guys, do we have a form? Here. Here. Hey, I'm sure you guys have a pen and paper. The sticky note will get thrown in the trash. Yeah. Hey, you must have a weapon on you. Hey, uh, you three need to step outside. Why? Because well, I told you to. Well, on September 5th, 2014, I attended the police accountability march that marked the one-year anniversary of the shooting death of veteran Dennis Reynoso. While filming the march, I noticed an undercover Lynn police vehicle shadowing the peaceful crowd. I approached the vehicle and requested the officer's name and badge number. The Lynn police vehicle struck me hard enough that its mirror folded back, and the driver immediately stopped and got on his radio after he hit me. The officer did not check to see if I was injured and did not offer any sort of aid, nor did he ever identify himself. On September 8th, I entered the Lynn Police Department to report the incident. Lieutenant Shorten took an initial report. So I'm here because on Friday I had a police officer from the Lynn Police uh, drive a vehicle into me. I don't have any, any record. There's no record whatsoever? I watched him call in, so that's interesting. That, I, don't, I don't see anything else. I then found the vehicle in the station's back lot. So uh, it looks like, oh, look, they repaired, the they repaired it. All right, so they, they didn't, uh, okay. Look so look, they did not, uh, all right, so you can see it is detached from uh, when it hit me and they had to repair it with that screw that definitely uh, was not there. 
As I documented the vehicle, a Lynn police cruiser pulled up. Howdy. Oh, uh, this is the car that hit me. That car hit you? Yeah. Hey guys, this is private property. Gotta get out of the way. This is public property. Uh, no, your police not. station. You Can I have your name and uh, badge number, please? No, I will not go on the station and ask. Me. For your name and badge. No, you Can I see your ID card, card, please? I don't have an ID card. On. Really? That's illegal. Under Massachusetts general law, it absolutely is. Laws. I'm making a uh, lawful request under Massachusetts law yeah, for your guys, ID card. You get off of private property. I left the lot and approached the main desk. Howdy. Uh, sorry to bother again. Oh, hey. Uh, you guys are playing, right? Both of you. Pardon me? I need both of your IDs. What's the law for his request? Because you're on private property. Do you leave right? Why? I'm sorry. Are you leaving? No, I haven't made my uh, report yet. You made your report. Well, well actually, first of all, I'd like to make a complaint about this gentleman here. Second of all, what's the complaint? Your refusal to identify yourself uh, is against the law. Okay. Literally. Um, I'm sure if you know if you ever have an appointment with the chief, you're talking to him, you'll get my information. Well, I'm sure I will. But uh, in the meantime, I'd like to make a complaint. Are you saying that I can't do that? Not with us. Not with you. Who do I make a complaint with? The chief's the best guy. The chief's the best guy. Yeah. Okay. So make an appointment. Okay. I'll do that. This may be done. No, you don't. Maybe that. Howdy. I don't know. Right. I'm out there waiting for Dave or not. So. Wait for who? Trying to make. They were talking to Dave and now they're waiting here. So I don't know what's uh, what's up with that. What is it that you're looking for? Uh, well, I found the car that hit me on Friday. I was reporting it earlier. Um, okay. it's out back. Okay. And what are you doing going in private property, videotaping police cars? What? Okay. You're subject to arrest for going back into private property. Am I being arrested? Police cars. Huh? Am I being arrested? I said you are subject to arrest okay. for going out there. Now, what is it that you need? Uh, well, I'm still trying to report that a police car drove into me, and I found it. It's literally out back. The officer in charge has your complaint. So are you trying to stop them from... He literally does not have all the information he needs. He has the information that he needs and documented to send it on for additional investigation if needed. Oh, okay. He has documented Can the complaint. It's being forwarded to the people that need the complaint, which means oh, that you have no other business that you need to be doing here right now. I would also like to make a complaint about this officer. May I please talk to the lieutenant? No. No? no. You're going to block the, the complaint about this yeah, officer, and you're not going to let me What's explain. What's the complaint you want to make about that officer? Refusal to ID under Massachusetts law. He gave you his badge number. He, I gave you my badge. He flat out refused. He did not show a uh, ID card. Did, did it was he, only when he came back out here to harass me further after telling me to come in here. I'm not harassing you. I'm just talking to you. Okay. I, I've asked you several times. Now I'm telling you, leave the police station. I have a criminal complaint against Robert Jeremy. He violated the law. He violated my rights. And I would like to file a criminal complaint and have it be investigated. I'm a victim of a crime. So I would like the NPD to investigate who? No, sir. We're not doing the investigation. So you want to make a complaint against me to go to the state attorney? I didn't say I want to make it. I will make a complaint against you to the state attorney. I'm going to ask you to do it. Well, I'm not going to leave this to I'm not asking to leave. If you don't... I'm asking to file a no, criminal... No, sir, we're not filing anything. Okay. I look forward to... You're under arrest. Did you provide Mr. Jernigan with any... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I